So SV Boney has come out with a pro version of their SV241 power box. I did a review on the original power box a while back. This one comes with controllable ports. So we have not only DC ports that we can turn on and off, but we can also turn on and off groups of USB ports as well. For me, that comes in very handy, especially since I have the observatory. Now I have a little bit more granular control over the power to my devices. So I've been using this for about a month now and it's been rock solid for me. I have a couple issues with the software, but they're working on putting fixes out for that as well as a new firmware upgrade too. So let's get to it. My name is Rich and you're watching Deep Space Astro. So in the box, we have the SV241 itself. We'll go over that in a little bit. Allen key. We have a dovetail that mounts on the bottom of the box. So you can mount it on top of your scope as well as the screws to accommodate that dovetail adapter. And under our piece of foam here, we have all the cables. So this is USB-C, USB-A. So this will be the one that connects the box to your computer. Your 12 volt power input. We have temperature and humidity and temperature sensors. We'll go over those in a minute. And they gave us three power cables. So at least enough to get you started, right? We have six in here that we can use. Comes with three. If you're going to need more than that, then you'll have to purchase those on your own as well as a user guide. So let's just take a walk around the ports on this box. We'll throw everything back in here for the time being. So we have USB 3 connector. As you can see, it's labeled PC. So that's the cable that goes to your computer to control everything. Our power input and our five volt and 12 volt indicator lights. Flipping it around, we have our six power output ports. The first one is labeled always on, which means just as you would expect, there is always power there. You cannot turn it on and off. The other five ports are controllable from within the software. Again, we'll go over both the standalone software as well as the ASCOM driver. So you can control this with a Nina or any other ASCOM compliant software, but you can turn all five of these ports on and off at the same time or individually. On this side, we have yet another power output port that is regulated. Two pulse width modulated output ports for your dew heaters. So it'll run two dew heaters for you. And then these are the ports for the temperature and humidity and temperature that I just showed you when we went through the unboxing. The temperature port actually will monitor the temperature of your dew heater. And then temperature and humidity is actually for the ambient temperature and humidity. So it knows and can predict when dew could possibly start to be forming. And then obviously control your dew heaters based on that logic. Logic. Last and final side, we have a USB-C port as well as three USB-2 ports and then two USB-3 ports. On the bottom, like I said, for the dovetail bracket, there's a, we have a quarter inch 20 as well as M4 threaded holes. And just like the original SV241 that I reviewed a little while ago, this also protects all of your equipment too, right? So it has ESD protection, the electrostatic discharge protection, reverse polarity detection, under and over voltage protection, over current protection, short circuit protection. So according to the specs, this will protect all your equipment from most possible electrical issues that, that could occur. So what I'm going to do with this box is in my observatory, I currently run a Pegasus micro power box as well as the Apertura armored USB hub. It's a powered USB hub. So I should be able to replace both those boxes with just this single box and do some real world testing with it. So that'll be my next step. I'll get this out in the observatory and then I'll show you guys how to install the software and the ASCOM drivers and take it for a quick spin. All right. So I've removed my power USB hub as well as the Pegasus micro and installed the SV Boney power box. So it has replaced both of those units for me and and the next thing we need to do is download two pieces of software. If you're using Nina or any other ASCOM compliant software, all you really need is this first one, the ASCOM driver. The second one, the hub control, is a little standalone Windows app that you can use to do the same thing without needing to use the ASCOM drivers through Nina or whatever other application you're using. So we're going to download both of them just so we can go through installing and taking a look at the Pro Hub control here. All right, so... Take a look at both of these. We'll start with the Pro Hub, the Windows app that runs standalone right here. So just a zip file, just extract it. And it is as simple as just double clicking on the executable. It'll prompt you for admin permissions, which is fine. Just click more info and run anyway. And then yes. And as you can see, if you don't have .NET installed, you'll need to install it. So just click the yes button and it'll take you to the website to get that installed for you. When that's done, just run it. It'll take a few minutes to get through this. So I will pause the video as it's running and come right back as soon as it is done. All right, so .NET's installed and let's go back and try and run the executable again. 
and this time we are successful. COM3 is the port that I'm connected with. Five and six, this is my observatory and my mount. So COM3 should be this box. Let's click connect, and yep, there we go. And you'll notice if we look at the DC ports, they all are off currently. So this is the first issue I have with the software, is if you remove power from the power box itself, and then later power it back up, these DC ports default to being off. So you have to go in and turn on whichever ports that you're currently using, whether it's just a few of them or all of them to power up those devices. Not a big deal, but in Nina, I like to hit the power button down in the bottom left corner that connects all of my devices for me automatically. If this thing defaults to all these ports being turned off, well then any device that doesn't have power is gonna fail connecting in Nina. I have been told that there's going to be a new firmware version in the future, probably around end of November, beginning of December, 2025, that will resolve that. It'll allow it to remember which ports we're currently on and which ones are off but as it stands right now default if you remove power from the box this is the state that's going to come in dc ports will be off usb ports will be on any values that you have in your pwm control as well as the adjustable voltage port we're all going to default back to zero so just keep that in mind for now but they are working on that so pretty straightforward right under switch control we have our dc one two three four and five so we can turn those on and off individually i have my mini pc that i'm actually remoted into connected to the always on port so I don't inadvertently turn it off because if I turn that port off this computer that I'm in goes off and then I'm stuck and I have to go out there and reset everything you can also turn off USB ports they're in two different groups so USB port one through three and then USB port four through six if you wanted to refresh the status of everything in the screen that's what update state is for so it's a switch in PWM status updated from device PWM being these controls over here on the left update sensor is our sensor data down here. So you can see our input voltage, power, current temperature, current dew point, our humidity, and the lens temperature being the temperature probe that monitors the actual temperature of your dew heater. So I don't have a dew strap wrapped around my SCT. I actually have Celestron's dew heater ring on the front of the corrector. And it actually worked out pretty nice because that sensor actually fit perfectly in a clip that is meant for Celestron's temperature sensor. So if it's in there relatively snug, I'm going to keep an eye on it just to make sure it doesn't come loose and fall in front of the corrector plate and cause some issues but so far i think it'll be okay so i was able to snake that up inside of there so it can monitor the temperature of the ring and then these two buttons down here close all switch open all switch so this is going to be turning everything off dc ports and usb ports and then open all switch is going to do just the opposite it'll turn all the dc ports back on as well as all the USB ports back on. So that regulated port that I showed you during the unboxing, that is this control right here. So currently it's at zero volts, but you can adjust it to whatever voltage that you would need. So I can remember back when I started using my Canon M50, my mirrorless camera, I bought a dummy battery for that. And that camera ran at, I believe it was like eight volts. So I can set that regulated port to eight volts and it would be able to operate my camera. So I don't have anything connected to it. So I'm gonna leave it down in zero. And then PWM1 and PWM2 are your dew heater controls. So nothing real fancy, but it gets the job done. You don't need to jump into Nina or whatever you're using for the ASCOM drivers to get control of everything. So we'll close that down and let's go over and get the ASCOM drivers installed, which is this one right here. So once again, we just have to extract the contents of the file and then just run the executable with inside of it. This will actually install so Nina can see the ASCOM drivers. Pretty straightforward. Nothing different from any basic install. Finish. And then we'll jump over and start Nina out. So I'll come over to the switch. Hit refresh to let it scan for the new device. And then in our drop down, you should see ASCOM driver for SV Boney switch. Select it. And before you try to connect, you want to hit your settings button to initialize it. We know we're on COM port 3 with that. And then click OK. Now we come back over, hit our power button, and it should connect for us. So there we go, we have all the controls that we just looked at in the Windows app all snapped into Nina. So DC 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. There's our USB 1 through 3 that we can turn off, USB 4 through 6 that we can turn off. This is our adjustable, a regulated port that I was showing you in the Windows app, and our dew heater control. So PWM1 and PWM2. This switch down here for the sequence open close that turns everything off and on, like those two buttons that we saw again in that Windows app. So 
Just a quick way to shut everything down and bring it back up if you needed it to. You can also control all of these too within your sequence if you have the need for that. So if we come over to the sequencer and I'll just start typing switch to bring up what we're looking for here. Set switch value and you can see in here all of our DC ports, our USB ports, our adjustable port, our two do heater controls, as well as the master on and off switch. Values for the switches obviously are just going to be zero or one. So zero for off, one for on. Same thing for the USB ports one for on zero for off the adjustable port you can put in the voltage that you want it to run at and then again pwms because those, that's pulse width modulation you can set the value that you want for it to how much power you want to apply out those ports to your do heaters so it gives you some automated control being able to use it within the sequencer as well so you can also label these too so instead of dc one two three four and so forth if you disconnect hit your settings button you can provide whatever name you want in here so camera mount you know what have you whatever you want to put in here and then click ok and then connect now you'll see it's labeled in nina camera and mount one thing i did notice and they told me it should be fixed in the next firmware release as you can see here i have camera mount labeled and let's say i plug something to uh, dc3 so now i want to label that when i disconnect and reconnect my names are still there but when i disconnect and go back in the settings so I can rename DC3. The names have been cleared out. So I'd have to actually type everything back in for these last two that I did. It's Everything's good as long as you don't go back into the settings and then it resets everything back to defaults. I do have a way that you can back up those settings so you don't have to keep setting them if you do accidentally clear them out. And I'll show you that in a few minutes after we go through the rest of the stuff. This bonnet piece here where it says T's on, I'm assuming it's supposed to say trace on, but I've been told it has no function anyway. So just disregard it completely. All right. So let let me show you how you can back up the names of your ports that you have set. So in the switch within Nina, currently the switch is disconnected. So if I go into the settings and we'll set the first port to my camera, the second one to my mount, and we'll leave three, four, and five as they are just for this example right now. Click OK. And like I showed you before, now when I connect, I can see my labels are in place. So there's my camera, there's my mount, and DC3, 4, and 5 are the same. To back these up, if you come down to your start menu and run a PowerShell session, and then just drop this command into PowerShell, and I'll, I'll leave this down in the description if you guys are interested in doing this. So I'm just going to copy and paste, hit enter, operation completed successfully. So if I go back to my desktop, you can see that I have a new file here labeled ASCOM switches backup.reg. This is a registry file. The registry is where most, if not all the settings for any application that you have installed, including Windows, it's like the heart of the operating system for the most part. That's the place where these settings are stored. So what we can do here, just to show you what happens, if I disconnect my switch, go into the settings, like I said, everything's cleared out. And if I click OK, and then reconnect, I just lost all my names, right? So we have that backup file now though. So if I disconnect and just double click on the, the file that was created by the PowerShell command, we'll be prompted if we want to import those settings, click yes. It's giving you a warning because again, we are adding to the registry. Go ahead and click yes. It confirms that the settings have been imported. And now if we come back into Nina and reconnect the switch, you can see camera and mount has been restored for us. So it's just a quick way to be able to get things back to the way that they were before you went in and cleared them inadvertently, if that's what happened. Now, the other thing you can do, and I'm going to say I'm not going to recommend this, but if you know what you're doing, you can also edit that file to rename or label the other ports. So for example, let's say I plugged in something to DC3. Instead of coming in the settings, I can come over and open up this file just in Notepad. And it's pretty straightforward, right? DC1 camera, DC2 mount. If I wanted to change DC3 to... I don't know, let's say I plug my dome into it and then said save. You gotta be careful when you're in here messing around with this. That's why I said I don't recommend it, but if you understand it and you know what you're doing and you get it, then you can do that. But make your change, save the file. Now, if I double click that file again and go through the same prompts that we did previously, when I come back up in the Nina and connect the switch again, you can see DC3 came in 
with the port name dome. So like I said, this should be fixed in the next firmware version they were telling me about. So you may not even need this. By the time you see this video and make your purchase and receive your product, the new firmware may be out already. Okay, so let's talk about the auto do feature now for our do heaters. As I mentioned before, I'm using a, the Celestron do ring on the front of my corrector plate and that heater thermometer is actually clipped in and sitting right up against the ring. If you're using a dew strap, the idea is to slip that thermometer underneath your dew strap as it's wrapped around your optical tube. And the auto do just works automatically. There's nothing that you need to do. So as I mentioned before, we have two PWM ports. PWM1 is our auto do port and PWM2 is just a manual port that you can set at whatever level that you want. You're in control of PWM2. Nothing will change those settings or turn it on and off for you. So again, PWM1, there are thresholds that need to be met that determines when power is turned on and off to the dew heater itself. And it's based on these values that you see up top here. So we have ambient temperature, our dew point, as well as our lens temperature. So the first thing before we talk about those thresholds is when auto dew is activated, you will see PWM port one turn on automatically above 79% is what I was told. Now in my testing, I'm actually seeing the port turn on at 249. You can see here, you can go as high as 253. So that puts us around 98%. Since I'm seeing that 249, and SV Boney has says it'll turn on above 79%. That's within that range that they're talking about, but maybe you'll see that number a little bit lower just depending on the conditions and the environment. So what turns it on? The first one is, is if the ambient temperature is below zero degrees Celsius, the heater will turn on and it'll only turn off if the lens temperature rises above five degrees Celsius. Second condition is, is if the ambient temperature is between one and 15 degrees Celsius, the heater will stop if the lens temperature is 10 degrees above our dew point. And you can see right now, as I was talking, the port is turning on and off because we're close to those thresholds that I just spoke about. Uh, the third threshold is, is if the ambient temperature itself is 15 degrees Celsius, the heater will stop if the sensor temperature is seven and a half degrees Celsius above the dew point. And I've sat here for many of hours watching this over many nights to monitor where these values are at. It does seem to be behaving this way. The only one I wasn't able to check is being below zero degrees Celsius because it hasn't been that cold yet here, thank goodness. So it does work. This entire box has been working great for me. I haven't had any issues with it outside of just the software quirks that I've already talked about. And again, they are planning on making changes to the firmware to correct those and make this a little bit more user friendly. So that's the auto do again, just on PWM port one. PWM2 is for a second heater strap if you need one and you're in complete control of the voltage that pushes out to that one. So whatever you would like to set that to, you would just come in here and say you wanted to go 150, hit your tick box and it'll set that to 150 for you out there and it'll stay there for your entire session. So there's one more thing that I really don't like the way the software works, but SV Boney says that's just part of the protection circuit that they have in there, the protection logic. So I have my mount plugged into DC port two and if I I go over to my mount and use the actual power switch that's on it and turn it off and then turn it back on, I no longer have power being fed to my mount. The box has determined that something possibly could be wrong. So to protect the mount, it has removed power from that port. I don't see that kind of behavior with my Pegasus power box. I can use a switch to turn it off and on. I think it's a little bit too sensitive, but I guess too sensitive is better than not sensitive enough. So what happens is when I turn that switch off, I have to come back into the switch interface. I'll see that it's off and I've got to turn it back on here and then everything is fine again. All right, so like I said in the beginning, this has been a rock solid unit for me. I haven't had any issues at all with it. Once they get the software and or the firmware updated, then make a couple extra tweaks to the things that I pointed out, then I'll go from that 99% happy with it to 100% happy with it. Before you go, I just wanna take this time and say thank you to all my members, both here on YouTube and on Buy Me A Coffee. I appreciate everybody's support. Thanks to all of you that like, comment, and share the videos. It keeps the channel growing. If you're not a subscriber, hit that subscribe button. And if you're not a member, consider becoming a member and you get access to my free serials beginner guide as well as get your name scrolling at the end of all my videos so again thank you everybody we'll see you in the next video in clear skies